Hey guys, welcome to my new office. Working from home, loving it. Not, I'm missing people, I miss social interaction. But anyway, enough of that. I thought today I would do a video, if I could stay still. I thought today I would do a video on the cost of living in Yangon and specifically compared to England because that's where I'm from. So I thought it would be quite interesting and I wrote a few things that I want to compare. So let me just get my note. Okay, so the first one I can do because I had my electricity bill last week, so I was going to compare electricity and my electricity for the whole month, including, if you think about it, I've got three ACs in my house, my electricity for the whole month was only £13, which was 27000 chat, remember I can say chat now, not kayak. And I was really worried when we got handed our bill, I was like, oh my god, it's going to be so much money because obviously in England we don't have... AC and yeah it's only £13 which is a lot less than it was at uni. I remember my mum at uni, maybe like £50 each. Okay maybe not that much but it was a lot more than this but then I thought I have been really careful but apparently I was told that in this apartment building last year it was only £5 a month so it has gone up compared to Myanmar prices but anyway it's a lot cheaper. Next up transport is definitely a lot cheaper. I think I don't take taxis much in England, but even like a five, ten minute journey is like five pounds. Whereas here we take a taxi to work some mornings or home from work, and for about 20, 25 minutes to 30 minute journey, it is about two pound fifty. So it's really good. Transport is very cheap. There's buses as well, which I would not know how to take because I can't speak Burmese. But I reckon they're very cheap as well. well. They have these little things that you can sit on, like beside a motorbike, which I might try. I want to try and see. Not a motorbike, an actual cycle bike. I want to see what it's like. And I don't know how much that is, but I reckon it's pretty cheap. Food. Okay, so this is the one where it can either be really expensive or really cheap. Obviously, the street food. And I have a dodgy stomach, so I wouldn't trust that. But you can get. You know, you get a massive meal for like 50p, it's really good. Or you can buy your vegetables on stalls at the side of the road, which I'm going to try and do because the same kind of vegetables in the supermarket, the supermarket or marketplace, which is really expensive, and they're like maybe three to five times the price. So I'm going to try and buy my fruit from the market side. And yeah, you can get some Western products, but obviously they are really expensive, they're like double the prices in England. So basically food prices, the cost of that can be however cheap or expensive as you make it. I'm quite picky so I think I spend most of my money on food. But yeah, it could be really cheap. If you would eat anything and you have a stomach made of steel, then it could be really cheap. Household items are a lot cheaper. I mean, I bought some washing detergent for my washing machine the other day and it was like one pound, but it's probably not the best quality. I think I need to, I just don't know what brands to get. It's so hard when you move to a new country, you have to think of all that stuff, like what do I get? What do I use? I guess I've got to test them out, so we'll, we, we will see. And bin bags are really cheap and everything, but I would say for cleaning, I haven't bought mops and hoovers and all that, because you can get a cleaner here, and lots of them really need to provide this, the um, equipment and washing detergents, etc. But if at my building, if you pay £7.50 for two hours, two and a half hours, they bring everything with you, they clean it so well. So I thought I would just do that because in the long run that'll probably be cheaper than buying everything. And at, when I'm at work, I don't want to come home and clean because I could clean better, but I'm not very good at cleaning, as my mum and dad will know. Yeah. Eating out can also be, there's a, there's a, it's like in England, there's a big divide. There's like, mmm. I mean, if you want to go to really fancy places, you can pay up to £30 for a meal. But then we've been going to this restaurant called Wei Wei, and it's probably like two pounds, £1.50 to £2 a dish, and it's so, so good. So it just depends what you like. There's also brunch every Sunday at the hotels, and that's like, I don't know, pounds, £30 to £40. Pounds. But you get a lot of food, and you get free flow drinks. So it depends what you want. 
I think most places we've been to have been really reasonably priced for eating out. So yeah, it's up to you what you want to eat. Activities, well, because as I've said in a previous video, it's not that touristy. And so sometimes if you try and book something online, like we went to Henry's Village, and if you booked online, it said it was about 70, no, 50, 70 dollars per person, but we, we ended up going for like five to 10 dollars a person. So I think they, online, they make it much more expensive for tourists. So if you ring them, if you're living in Myanmar and you ring them, then you can probably get a cheaper deal. And most things I thought you'd have to pay for to go into like the pagodas or people park, which apparently you do, but we didn't have to. But I think the more out of the angle you get, the more activities you want to do, it probably gets more expensive. Um, visas, so usually a visa is £50 and it lasts for 60 or 90 days. I thought it was three, three months, I'm not sure. But we've luckily had our visa extended for a year because obviously we can't leave right now, we have to leave the country every time. But because of Covid, we can't leave the country. But yeah, it would be like £50 every time we come in, which could add up to quite a lot, I guess, over a year. That would be like £200. But yeah, that can get expensive. Visas do get expensive. And phone, SIM card. SIM card, I probably said it before, it's also really cheap. So it's like 10 I think it was five to ten, five pounds, forty gigabytes, which is so much better than England. I think my contract in England was fifteen to twenty pounds an hour. I think not an hour, <laughs> twenty pounds a month, and I had about twelve gig. But then I don't have calls on my phone. I don't mean really understand it, so I just use WhatsApp call anyway. So it's 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 okay, but it's definitely cheaper than England. And it lasts longer, I found. I found in England if I didn't have, wasn't on Wi Fi, it went really, really quickly. Gym, if you like to work out like me. Um, the gym can be really expensive. There's F45, which is like, I can't remember how much my friend said it was, like 150 a month, which is a lot. But we are in an apartment block that has a gym and a pool, however, it's shut now because of COVID. So I was just using that, but they do have other gyms that can be around £20 a month, depends what you're looking for. And I don't know if there's any pools you can go in. Clothing can be very expensive if you're tall and not Asian petite size, because there's not many Western clothes shops. If you want to go to Western clothes shops, then you have like Prada and Gucci and they have like Nike and stuff, but it's way more expensive here. And they have, the one shop they have is Mango. But because it's such a newish country open to Westerners, etc., I think maybe they'll, if not over a few years, open more shops like Westerner friend. Mm. They might open more shops to Westerners because in Indonesia, over the time I was there for two years, they opened Pelambert Top Shop and H&M. So, fingers crossed for more shops. And rent. Okay, obviously that's a big one. I probably should start with this one. Rent is around about well from my in the center of yangon i'm not really sent well i'm like yeah basically center it's 650 pounds a month roughly and you can get cheaper than that but when i was looking at the price in england you could pay 1000 to 2000 pounds a month for a room in a flat in london obviously london i'm just talking about london so i think this is a pretty good deal i got two, it's a really nice flat it's so big it's the best location so obviously rent is a lot cheaper and you can find flatmates on Facebook pages, they have all that going on. And cinema, it's like £2.50 for the best. In, I really want to go to the cinema here, I was going to go, but it's been shut since I arrived because of COVID. But in, in, in Indonesia, you can pay £2, £2.50, you get a whole bed, blankets, pillows, it's amazing. So I want to go and see what it's like here. I'll take you guys with me when I do. But yeah, that's my cost of living in Myanmar. If you have anything else you want to know about, then let me know. But as you can probably tell from what I've said, it is a lot cheaper than England and obviously London. So it's been pretty good. It's a good place to save money if you want to, because you don't spend loads. And you can do a lot more if your money is great. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. If you do have any questions, then comment below, press the like, subscribe, and I will see you soon. Bye!